What's up, YouTube? Just a little update here. Sorry, I haven't been on YouTube in uh, a few weeks. I've been really busy. School's about to wrap up. Getting me a job lined up. Been fussing around here with the old ZVS driver. Let's go through a little list here of improvements or whatnot. These capacitors, I actually got bolts in there, so these are all nice and tight against each other. They got a really good connection on these little plates like that. Uh, so that's pretty cool because last time my issue was one of the 14 gauge wires I had jumped between capacitor to capacitor. The 14 gauge wire melted and shorted out my 10 hour piece transistors which really sucked. So uh, I kind of wanted to prevent that again. But what's really funny, I just realized this is 14 gauge. So that's a problem, I'll have to change that out. Um, I also want to change out my smoother capacitor design. One of these wires should be moved to the back in case this capacitor is doing more work due to resistance. You know, basically I'll put one lead on here then one lead on there. It'll be the same thing, but it'll technically be proper. Next one here, made a new inductor. This is actually two. Hang on, let me pull you out an example from my inductor bag. Get us a camera down here. All right, all right. So this is my good old bag of inductors. I got quite a variety of different types in there. But um, all right. So these this comes from a computer power supply, and this is the same type of core with the wire removed. Now originally I was using one just like this, except I wound it onto an old core like that. And I had 21 turns on there. And that was great. It actually worked really well. But it didn't draw a ton of current. And plus, at very high powers, this core was starting to saturate. So my bright idea was to get two of these cores, JB weld them together, perfectly centered. And then wind turns on there. And I actually got a couple different little taps on here. You know, here's your input, zero turns. And then I have the 21 turns, which was great previously. But uh, so there's the 21 turn tap, there's a 28 turn tap, and here is a 34 turn tap. And what I noticed is, unlike my old inductor, the more turns actually is pulling a bit more current out of these, uh, out of this driver. So that's good. I'm going to leave it on the 34 turns. But what's cool about this is uh, if I want to fine tune anything, I can just swap this over by a couple turns and that's usually good enough to fine-tune things up so anyways let's put these back away well look at this little thing oh yeah on the transistor gates okay I've acquired quite a couple of these ferrite beads from scrapping out a whole bunch of monitor uh, circuit boards so there's one little ferrite bead on the gate, and then here's another ferrite bead on the gate. What does this do? Well, this prevents unwanted oscillations from going into your gate. So that should hopefully improve the waveform, improve the switching signals, and yeah, that also prevents transistor short circuit and premature failure. So, all right, now that I've been rambling for nine minutes, and I'm sure you all love me, Let's test out a couple arcs on uh, approximately 50 volts input. Now, do you mind? This is my homemade flyback transformer, so it doesn't have a ton of voltage, but she's got quite a bit of current. And the cool thing about this transformer is I can put, let's say, 1500 watts in here, which would typically saturate this core, which it would, and it won't hurt my driver. This can be saturating all at once. But this driver, or this transformer, will still be doing just exactly what it should. Oh, look at all these little blobs here, okay? You see all these little burnt dots? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. 
Whoa. And that's what happens. That's a problem. That's a really big problem. Fuck. Fuck. Okay, we're good. I've rescued her. Since everybody loves high power, let's increase the power. Let's increase the power to approximately too much. And we are now drawing approximately three and a half amps open circuit. That's pretty happy. That's about as big as a microwave transformer arc. Couple other things I'd like to point out here since I got this driver beefed up a bit where it'll tolerate a bit more power. Uh, this audio transformer is not cutting it at all anymore. It, uh, when I input 110 volts to this driver and draw an arc, that input voltage drops down to 60 volts. I have a couple of these mots here that the secondary's burnt out on, so I'll just simply rewind this. I've got another one right down here, which has got a twin idea, so I'm going to rewind this one too, and then hopefully have a power supply that can actually create the power I need for this, or I might just try ballasted wall socket. I'm not real sure about that yet, So, but before all that, I really need to get rid of this other 14 gauge wire because it's freaking melting hot right now, so um, I hooked up my flyback transformer, my true flyback transformer, the also superior one that's lived in oil for the last three years. So we're starting off at about 50 volts. Damn, look at that corona. That's how you make a little jumper wire start smoking, everybody. Apparently, this isn't really proper, they say. So, all right, maybe we got a better connection now. Let's get her cranked up here. And I need to set my camera somewhere. This is not going to work. I'm no way holding my camera with this one. So I've got her cranked up a good bit now. Well, dang. I don't really trust this at that high power because the corona goes crazy. Like that. That's pretty crazy. I'm trying to find somewhere here, don't worry. Bear with me. Nope. Fucking ridiculous. Okay, hopefully my camera survives this. Improved driver. 